Hey everyone, my name is Laura and I am a developer advocate at Plumer. Today I'm going to be talking with you about how you can use Drupy SQL to load a Postgres SQL database into your Jupyter environment and perform exploratory data analysis with it. Drupy SQL is an open source project whose goal is to enable you to run SQL queries within Jupyter Notebooks via the use of magics. You can identify Jup uh, magics via the percentage and double percentage sign. And uh, what it allows you to do is basically change what programming language that specific cell accepts. So in Jupyter Notebooks, if we're assuming that the kernel is Python, the, the use of the magic would mean that for that specific cell, Jupyter will accept SQL syntax. Jupyter SQL started off as an IPython SQL fork. And in 2023, Catherine Devlin announced that IPython SQL was graduating to legacy project with Jupyter SQL its fork accepting the role as a successor. In this video, I'm going to be exploring some data from the UCA machine learning repository. And then my goal is going to be to download the data, upload that data onto a Postgres SQL database, and then using Jupy SQL to perform exploratory data analysis. Jupy SQL can be installed via the pip and conda methods. And to load it, what we need to do after installation is to load the extension via the load extension magic and then call it via the SQL or is double, sorry, single percentage SQL or double percentage SQL magics. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be working with a Docker image of a Postgres SQL database, uh, where typically I'll just pass the, the database name, password, the port. And then um, one key thing to do when we're going we're connecting to databases through the use of Python or Jupyter is the use of the connection string. Uh, this typically has the format of database type, the username, password, the port, etc. So I'm going to be using this connection string along with SQL Alchemy's um, create engine. One key thing to keep in mind when we're working with databases and credentials is to not leak them when we're working with Jupyter notebooks. So we're going to be using one method, such as uh, storing the credentials on a .env file that is stored on your local computer or not shared with anyone. And the goal of these .env file is to pass the information that we need and then later on load them from uh, Python. The way this typically looks like so if we're using something like .env is to load the .env file, access the variables via the variable names, and then construct our database string with these variables. And then from here, create an engine with our, our connection string. Now, the next thing to do is going to be to load data onto the database. I used a fairly straightforward method. In this case, the data wasn't too large, so I could load it by um, the use of pandas to SQL method. I created two tables, one for account information and one for district. I gave it appropriate names. I passed my connection to have the engine information. And then from here, once I have this, I can now perform exploratory data analysis with SQL. Now, there may be times where Python is sufficient and you can perform exploratory data analysis with Python and that works great. But there's other times when being able to leverage SQL, either because of how the data is structured or because of how large it is, is a fantastic way to reduce performance issues and maintain that workflow that you typically work with when you're doing EDA. To load the extension, we're going to go ahead and load it via the load extension or reload extension SQL, and then we pass SQL engine. This engine is going to contain the same engine that we initialized uh, in the previous cell. So notice how we can now start combining both SQL notation with our Python variables. And then from here, I'm going to be exploring some of the functionality that the Jupy SQL magics enabled you to, to have. Uh, one of those is the use of the SQL CMD uh, magic that allows you to load and take a look at the different table information. We can take a look at the columns, for instance, in, in the tables via the use of the SQL CMD columns and um, table options. And then we can also do some initial glimpses into the data via the explore table, which allows us to take a quick peek at what the data looks like. Furthermore, Jupy SQL uh, supports the use of data profiling, which is uh, giving you the option to get some summary statistics. Jupy SQL also enables warnings. So if your data has some uh, data mismatch types that will need to be addressed, it'll highlight them for you. And then uh, one other feature that I want to talk about is the use of uh, common table expressions or CTEs. Typically, one of the ways that this is structured is we'll have width followed by the query alias, followed by the query that we want to store into that alias. 
which we can then reuse. Now, when these queries get complicated, uh, code refactoring gets finicky. So one of the things that UPC Call does to support code refactoring is the use of the save method, or sorry, the save option within the SQL magic. This allows you to save the CTE into a variable that you can later reuse, not just within a SQL cell, but also within a Python cell. So for instance, if I wanted to select later on uh, information from the district account table, I can now directly access it via the alias and I can perform that query. But probably most interestingly is the fact that I can now make um, references to this alias and then store the results of the, that query onto Python variables. But when I switch from the double percentage to the single percentage magic. The key feature of this is that, of course, I can now transform my query results into another format, such as Polars or Pandas. And then I can go ahead and visualize my results using a library such as Seaborn. So really, you can combine both workflows within a single cell via the use of this magic. So as a summary, uh, this is an open source project fork from IPython SQL and currently maintained by the Plumer team that can be easily installed and loaded as a Jupyter extension. With it, we can connect to databases such as PostgreSQL and perform EDA with the use of these magics. And what this enables you to do is combine querying in SQL with other Python libraries such as Pandas or Seaborn. GPSQL can be found on GitHub. If you go to github.com, Plumer GPSQL. If this is a project that you like, uh, please give us a star. And if there's any issues or feedbacks you have, please do submit an issue so that our team can take a look at it and work on it. We're constantly looking ways for ways to build our community and we look forward to hearing from you.